Jeremy, welcome from the Bandulas. Did I say uh, that right? Yeah, uh, Bandulus. Bandulus. Yeah, Bandulus. I'm not yeah. here. Ba- well, it's yeah, uh, because there's a U ju- and not is there's a U. Sorry, yeah, my two bad. U's. Yeah, two U's. no doubt, no doubt. Uh, yeah, it's Jamaican patois means the criminals or the bandits. Uh, I was DJing under the moniker Proper Villain for you know since back in I don't know 2004 or something like that. And uh, yeah, I always thought I w- was going with the the villain theme to to you know to have for the live band. So yeah, now, the Bandulus. The Bandulus. I you know I knew that, and then it still got in my hand, uh, head about the Bandulas. <laughs> uh, even before we started recording, I told you how much of a simp I am, and I can't get the name right. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, man. Yeah, it happens all the time. <laughs> so elevator pitch, real quick for those who don't know, can you tell us who the Bandulus are? Yeah, man, we are a Jamaican soul American reggae band. You know, where you know we uh, we pay homage to the traditional sound. Uh, we're as if like if Otis Redding were to start a band with Desmond Decker. Uh, basically, any any 1960s Memphis meets 1960s Kingston. Uh, so if that's a uh, your traditional rock and roll kind of you know rock steady sound with the you know American Kind of like Motown uh, vocals. That's that's us. <laughs> how does how does a white boy from Austin, yeah, Austin, well, yeah. Texas, dive mm-hmm. into this genre of music? Because yeah, I mean, yeah, the jolt, the jazz, soul, ska. It's not yeah. really not really the thing that Texas is known for. Right. Well, if you yeah, I, I may look white, but I'm actually Mexican. I'm half right. Mexican. Okay. Yeah. All right. So my mom, my mom's white. So fair enough. <laughs> you know, fair complexion. And I'm only getting whiter with my vitiligo, like Michael Jackson. So <laughs> screwed up the band name and your race. This is this, yeah, is, this is a great interview starting <laughs> off right now. It's all good, man. No worries. It happened. I mean, it's been my identity my whole life. Like people always mistake me for something that I'm not. But uh, my dad. So it goes back to my dad being in. Uh, Tejano bands. He played Tejano music, uh, cumbia, salsa, conjunto, and a little bit of boogaloo, but uh, also played country and blues. He was in several bands. He was the keyboard player and sometimes band leader with uh, people such as Little Joe and uh, Alfonso Ramos. So that's like old school Tejano, 60s, 70s, (laughs) up to the 90s. He even backed, uh, some people might know, Sonny Asuna, Sonny and the Sunliners. Mm-hmm. Uh, sick. They had a big hit. They were, I think, on like American Bandstand in the sixties. But uh, anyway, so the majority of the music he played was Tejano, and Tejano and ska, like, <laughs> are kind of like they're like distant cousins, you know. Right. And then uh, you know, I always loved soul music. You know, my mom, uh, like, you know, both parents just, you know, they they had so much music growing up in the house, but uh, soul music. Kind of, I was like, oh, I, you know, I, I got through Scott to Scott through like the '90s, Goldfinger and Real Big Fish. Right. And I found out about this band called The Specials, and I was like, oh, whoa, there's a, spe- the, you know, a little bit older sound. And then through The Specials, I found out about Prince Buster, and so <laughs> I was like, now that, you know, that's the sound that the old. I didn't realize it was the original sound. So, how yeah. was it? Because it, when you listen to, especially Love a Woman, um, yeah. it is not your, it's obviously not your traditional ska. Right. It's not your traditional jazz or traditional soul. I mean, in some ways, when I first listened to the album months ago, it mm. was, it was like a, it was almost like a throwback to like a 1950s, you know, like simpler <laughs> times, if you will. I'm sounding yeah. like my parents right now. How was it getting band members to, to, jump on that well uh i've been lucky dude the this is our 15th year believe it or not uh i've i've originated a band in austin uh with a couple uh there's a band called the stingers atx back in the day and a band called los carnales who i was in for a little while uh i basically used they were kind of bands that i looked up to really right uh and i i i I had a few songs and uh, was in a band called Out of the Ashes of Los Garnales, a band called Ryan Scroggins and the Turnstown Texans for Rose. And uh, I was really kind of the side man for that. And it's honestly, it's similar to what I'm already doing. 
Mm-hmm. But because uh, with the, that was in Houston, and uh, Houston is just like this melting pot of Cajun music, <laughs> Spanish music, you know, country music, reggae, and everything. But uh, really, it started out as a recording project using those members of those bands I was just talking about. And um, whenever Ryan Scroggins, he became a herpetologist, started working for the the zoo. Kind of the band stopped playing so much, uh, and and uh, when I had a few songs, a couple guys were like, "Yo, you should just keep doing it, keep going." So I had to kind, I basically like the name Bandulus is criminal patois. We, you know, uh, we, you know, we basically steal things, whatever. Right. <laughs> the bandits. Uh, I had to commandeer a band. Um, I, I was able to. I had, you know, I had uh, contacts all over the like West Coast and California and stuff, and uh, I would uh, basically be like, "Hey, man." Uh, I could book these shows if uh, if you guys can play with me and learn these songs. And so, uh, yeah, I found this band called the River City All-Stars in San Antonio. And I took some of those guys from there. And, yeah, they they just were on board. So it was kind of kind of uh, interesting to find members to do, you know, what I want to do. <laughs> and there's, there's seven of you, right? Yeah, there's seven of us, seven of us. How do you manage all that? I mean, because you're kind of you're kind of do everything right now. So how do you yeah. manage seven personalities? I mean, I know some bands they can't manage three, and you got right. seven. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a you know it's a dynamic. Luckily, I've had the same drummer and bass player and uh, singer for the last seven years, and then I got one of my guys from San Antonio to move because I relocated in 2015 to Portland, Oregon, and uh, I got my original guitar player Mario to move up here uh recently so and then my original backing singer leah to move up here a few years ago as well so i have three original members (laughs) and four people from here and yeah i mean it's just uh luckily you know there's just a love for the music i guess what do you have to convince people to move from warm great city (laughs) austin's a great city austin is a great city yeah yeah to you know what? I don't think you have enough rain in your life and cold weather. Why don't you come on up to Portland? <laughs> right. Yeah. You know what? I don't know. It's kind of, that kind of amazes me myself. <laughs> <laughs> How, now making the change, did, did that yeah. moving from Austin to Portland, I know mm-hmm. that, you know, we had an album out in 2013 and then you brought the other one out in 2020. Was it mm-hmm. a artistic difference for you to move locations? Uh, no, honestly, I was, t- I was born and raised in Austin. I was kind of sick of the town itself and I didn't want to die only living in Texas my <laughs> whole life. So, uh, I had a good friend that lived up here and I was like, Oh man, I- I'm thinking about, you know, relocating. I couldn't afford, you know, I always wanted to be on the West coast because I love the scenery, you know, right. whether it's, you know, hot, hot and dry <laughs> down in the desert, down in California or the exact opposite up here. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh so so yeah portland just kind of i was like oh man i think uh i think we could make that happen my wife was on board and we brought our kids and yeah it was just uh and the very first day my buddy mario who ended up moving up as well he packed the u-haul with me and put my car on the on a trailer behind it and helped help help drive me up here that's awesome and now you're <laughs> married with kids so how is that? oh yeah yeah, uh, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna get into your album and everything, but you you know oh. you open the door, so we're gonna walk through it here. Yeah, um, no worries. Being in a band and and you know you guys were in Europe last year and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, talk about that this that balancing act. You know, oh, like when man. it comes to kids and wife and all of that. It take yeah, it takes a village, like they say, <laughs> right? Uh, luckily, my kids were old enough when we moved up here to watch themselves. I didn't have to pay for a babysitter. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, like my parents and and my wife's parents helped us from the beginning because uh, my I mean I was a father young I was nineteen when my first kid was born oh, wow. and uh, yeah my oh, wow. and my wife my wife was seventeen so Jeez. we were young yeah yeah and, uh, and now my my daughter is going to be twenty one this year and how about that dang dude so, that's crazy right <laughs> so you do the math on how old I am but. Uh, <laughs> But you know, it takes a village and my, and I grew up in a musical family. And so whenever they were completely supportive of, you know, 
of watching the kids while, you know, my wife would even come with me a lot of places and she actually got to go to Europe with us last year. Oh, that's and, awesome. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And, and, and her mother came up here and watched our 15 year old, you know, <laughs> our younger one. So, uh, now, so, now is your 15 year old is, 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 mm-hmm. are, are they into, uh, the band do lose? You know, they've, they've had, you know, she's, they're both just like, whatever. Like they're, they're, they totally love to come see us play when we play all ages shows. Right. But they're like, you know, whatever. Uh, they're into their own thing. <laughs> I have a, I have a nine year old daughter who loves, uh-huh. loves the interrupters. And so yeah, I'm, I'm nice. happy about that. But then also we're, you know, we're into all the musicals and Disney movies. Yeah. And, and I'm that mm-hmm. dad now who's at the stoplight rocking out to Frozen soundtracks. And I really want to be uh-huh. rocking out to like, rancid or op ivy or something like that <laughs> right right now speaking of the interrupters you got three shows yeah. coming up with them in april and it mm-hmm. seems like you guys have a pretty tight relationship so yeah. how talk about the shows talk about how you got those shows and yeah. just how'd you meet those guys because those are really cool dudes they're all the yeah most- they're great um i actually got to meet them years ago on in san antonio we opened up the interrupters in uh seven seconds and who was the other band uh Another big band is escaping me right now, but uh, we just kind of hit it off with them. It was, I think it was Interrupter's very first tour. Uh, I don't know if it was. Was that with Rat Boy? No, it wasn't with Rat Boy. Oh, it, okay. was, it, it was like definitely seven seconds in, uh, uh, I can tell you, another like 80s hardcore band. Oh, okay. Uh, um, and they were, yeah, it was. They also did one like right before. I I don't know. I can't remember if I saw them with Tim Timebomb when Tim Timebomb did a whole tour yeah. uh, with uh, Rancid on, as well. It was like Interrupters, <laughs> Tim Timebomb, and Rancid all in one package. <laughs> so I don't know if that that happened first because I met them both times. Uh, the first time was just they came to an after party after that big Tim Timebomb tour. And I just happened to meet the twins there and uh, Kevin. And then we met. We really solidified our our friendship whenever they came back to town and we played with them in San Antonio. And uh, we kind of just kept, kept in touch. Uh, when I moved up here, the, one of the very first shows I went to, Kevin was here in town. Um, he was like, hey, man, uh, I'm playing with the English Beat at the Wonder Ballroom. If you guys, if you're not doing anything, come on out. So I uh, hung out with him here. And actually, one day before I moved up here, the coolest text message I ever gotten. Uh, Kevin just hit me up out of the blue. It was like, Hey brother, I'm just listening to t- the times we had with uh, Tim Armstrong and my brothers in the car. And we're <laughs> rolling around town. I was like, what? You know, that was really cool. But uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and, and it goes all the way back to, they, they came to the town. They were still doing club shows. Uh, we opened up for them here in 2016, maybe here in Portland. And, uh, and yeah, just been keeping in touch with them and texting them every now and then. And, uh, we, uh, when they came through town with Flogging Molly over the summer, went and hung out with them down in Bend. And, so did- and, uh, yeah, they just kind of hit me up in November. We're like, Hey man, do you want to do these three shows with us? That's, how, how stoked were you when you got that text? You're like, Oh yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, I was like, are you serious? Like, of course. And it's funny. Cause our, our keyboard player, that, uh, Esteban Flores, who's, um, he was in the Steady 45. He actually played with the Interrupters for, I don't know, for at least 18 months. Right, uh, right before, right before they got uh, Billy, who's playing okay. with them now. But so, uh, how do you think the audience is going to take? Because you know the Interrupter shows are a young yeah. audience, you know, so you get to you get to you get to set the young minds on a right path and keep them away <laughs> from like pop music or Lizzo or something, you know? Right, man. <laughs> uh, well, that, that's exciting to me, but I, yeah, I'm wondering, uh, cause we do, we do well with younger kids. Cause, uh, we used to play, believe it or not, uh, farmer's markets and like anyone from <laughs> six months to 68 to 78, even we just had, you know, out there cutting a rug. So like, I'm excited just to, yeah, to, to kind of pass on to tradition and hopefully some of these ca- kids, you know, they they start playing like more traditional style music, and and buy a lot of <laughs> merch at the concerts too. Buy a yes, lot of please. merch. Yes, <laughs> please, please, please do. Um, <laughs> now speaking of shows and all this, what do you guys have coming up for 2023 outside of the Interrupters? Um, uh, well, shows? here in March we're doing a 
a little mini run with uh, Deals Gone Slack. Mm-hmm. If you guys know Deals Gone Bad and the Slackers, they have a side band when they're when they're both not doing anything mm-hmm. uh, called Deals Gone Slack. And uh, they're just coming through in March for, I guess they're doing a whole West Coast run. We're just part of the Pacific Northwest run of it. And then later on in the summer, we're doing our 15 year anniversary tour. Uh, headed down to Texas, do a whole whole run of Texas and Colorado and uh, Boise and Salt Lake City on the way down, and uh, and then later on in the year we're trying to get to the East Coast. Will so, you, uh, will you be coming to Nashville, Tennessee? Man, I would love to. All right, I would love to. We haven't. We only been to Nashville once, and that was back in like 2014. Okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah, well, when you a minute. when you come to Nashville, we're here. You know, I got couches. Yeah. I got couches. Oh, nice. Now. Love to hear that. <laughs> now, uh, do we have a new album coming this? this yeah. Year? So, uh, well, we're working on it right now. We actually have a couple of records in the works. <laughs> uh, new record. We we uh, went to Belgium last uh, summer and cut eight songs there, and then we had four already we had here. So we're putting those two, two together, and uh, we're sending it off to the label to do the mixing and the mastering. Uh, actually, as we speak, we were having these conversations this morning. And, uh, so yeah, I I would imagine, I would imagine it being out maybe early next year. I'm not exactly sure because we're already talking about the European tour in 2024. So that's, uh, that's kind of like what we're ramping up towards. Right. Well, that's awesome. Now, stalking your Instagram and following you guys for the last few months, Mm-hmm. You seem to play a lot of shows with a lot of well-known, established, legendary artists a lot in yeah. ska and stuff like that. And one of the things I always try to, when I'm talking to up-and-coming artists and everything, is let them know, I hate the word connection. Like, oh, yeah. you go make connections. Right, you right. seem to have very genuine friendships with a lot of these <laughs> artists. Yeah. That's a testament to you as a person. Give us some adv- give give the audience some advice on how they could just mimic you and and you know because you've been very easy to work with setting up this interview and um and like I said it seems like you have a lot of great you know great friendships within the industry. What is the one thing that you could pass on to up and coming uh, artists or even established artists because you know some of them are jerks that you right. could um you know like how how have you had these opportunities present themselves to you? Man, I guess, uh, A, I, well, most, I guess, be humble, you know, you right. gotta, like, obviously, that goes a long way. And, uh, don't be afraid to, you know, if you say, oh, hey, there's Vic Ruggiero over there, like, hey, man, you know, just like, you don't have to corner him and like talk to him for an hour, <laughs> just go by and be like, hey, man, love your stuff, blah, 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 really, but, you know, just kind of the same stuff that all fans do. But, uh, uh, but at the same time, just, I don't know, I, I don't know. Maybe it's part of charisma too. You know? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't want to, I'm not saying that I'm charismatic, but. <laughs> no, you are. You are. Were you, but, the, uh, were you the guy who has given your like CDs or vinyls to people or did you wait for them to ask you for them? Or were you like, here, just check it out. Or how did that go? Oh about? yeah. So, uh, man. So, well, they just kind of, we, we, for, for instance, with the slackers, we just, uh, opened up for them forever. Like, uh, <laughs> and, and in fact, my very, the very first Bandulu CD, the, uh, record, uh, Vic Ruggiero of the slackers is on five tracks. So okay. I, uh, cause I didn't have a solid band. Right. And, uh, he, he one day out of the blue hit me up and was like, Hey man, I'm, I'm coming down to Texas. I want to do a bunch of shows. Uh, would you mind booking a couple and, uh, and maybe opening? So I was like, oh, yeah, of course. And so I took I just took the opportunity to set up a, a session, a recording <laughs> session while he was in town. And uh, it just kind of just happened, you know, that the planets aligned where where I was working on it at a, at a time that he was coming down. And, now, I don't, I don't know if you can talk about this, but the record label that you're going to be yeah. releasing with, which which, mm-hmm. which label will you be releasing? It's uh, Batasonics. Okay. Uh, yeah. Records out of out of Belgium. They're in uh, Shalawa. Okay. Or Bru- I guess I guess they have a, a office in Brussels, but uh, yeah, it's uh, Nico from the the band The Moon Invaders from back in the day. But his new wow. band is called the the Utopians. Okay. And uh, he also plays with like Victor Rice, all okay. the Victor Rice stuff. Uh, and yeah, he, he 
I guess they, they actually recorded all there as well. And, uh, man, he's been, he, he's had a, 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 uh, studio called the Pum Pum Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> he's had that for, I mean, so many, so many great records have come out of that, that spot. And, uh, yeah, to be able to, to record there, it was like, it was mind blowing. Thank you to, uh, Peter Clem and the Freedom Sounds and, and, and the Stingers for bringing us out to Cologne to make that connection. Cause literally like, that would not have happened had we not gone out there. That's, so that's awesome. Now, some of my some of my songs, my favorite song of yours, which I'm yeah. like, like I'm a total stand for, is "Smile." I think oh, "Smile" cool. "Smile's Great," and yeah. then you get into um, the other ones I have on my my saved. Sorry, I'm not a vinyl guy. I'm a Spotify guy. It's all right. Stop playing with my heart and dear Lord. Yeah, dear Lord's a great. Song. But those songs will stop playing my heart and dear Lord. They're pretty popular on Spotify for you guys, and yeah. I know that. For your genre of music, vinyls are very important. Yeah. And have you seen, like, what would you say is like, <laughs> As I, you I can saw, tell. <laughs> don't ever ask me to help you move if you got to move those vinyls. <laughs> get 20 of those in a box. It's like a, it's like oh a body. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and a lot of this is back stock for, for shows, you know, got, got a big merch table to sell all that, those records. So, well, do you have any rarities back there? Oh yeah, there's a few. There's a couple. I mean, I, not as many as a lot of my friends, right? Um, because I, I kind of, I put a limit on how much I spend on a record. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's probably there's a few in there that's that's kind of rare these days. I, even more so on the CD wall over here, because uh, yeah, it's funny that those are just. Kind of paperweights at this point, but I still have, I still have a CD player. I still I still spin them. <laughs> so I got my kids an autograph interrupter CD. Oh, when cool! I, when fight the good or not? Um, the uh, the new one came out. My daughter picked up the CD, looked at it, and asked, "What is this?" Oh wow! <laughs> and I go, "You put you you play it," and she goes, yeah. "Um, so it's like Alexa," and I'm like. I'm I'm 41. I'm so freaking old. She has no clue what is. She's like looking yeah. at the mirror of the CD. So she would. Yeah. She'd love your wall. Oh um, wow. <laughs> so like when it when 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 people discover you guys, are mm-hmm. you finding that it's on? Is it on Spotify? Is it on YouTube? Are they finding the vinyls in record stores? Like, how are people? Or is it concerts and then they buy it, the vinyls? Yeah, it's usually by shows. Okay, I would say um, just because like. Uh, you know, uh, the slackers have given us a huge opportunity over the years, like playing with those guys. Um, uh, who else? Like, I, I mean, not to give the credit uh, away, but uh, yeah, usually it's through shows, uh, the Scatolites. So we went on a big uh, run with the Scatolites right before COVID started. And uh, yeah, luckily, Level Woman, I had, even though it officially didn't come out until January of 2020 (laughs) i had copies with me so i actually sold them before uh but luckily i just put that out on my own label and so i wasn't having i wasn't (laughs) breaching anything but uh uh yeah it's just it's it's through the shows like uh recently we had our friends uh mustard plug and uh bucko nine uh and it was the whole in defense of scott tour came through and like Still, I mean, we've been playing in town for seven years and still people are like, whoa, y'all are from here? Like, they can't believe it. I'm like, yeah, man, we play shows all the time. Come on out, you know? Like, just check us out. Now, the the Love a Woman uh, mm-hmm. album, did you did your wife help you out with that? Like, now, now, like, this is how you really love a woman. Or where did yeah. the theme uh, for that? Because what a bold concept yeah. um, for, you know... <laughs> I mean, like that's a bold line to make an album yeah. called "Love a Woman" because you're giving me the tips right now. Yeah, hey, how about that? Where the, <laughs> well, uh, where did the inspiration come for that? Well, I mean, uh, my my whole themes of of the majority of my songs are like broken love songs. You know, it's like <laughs> they're either making you the hero, or usually you're the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. You know, but uh, every now and then there's a glimmer of hope. Right. <laughs> Uh, actually, yeah, she helped me a lot. She did the artwork. Um, okay. I re, uh, she came up with the, she took the photo. That's me and our friend, uh, Kat on the front. And, uh, she took the photo of our last record and did all the artwork on the last record too. And, uh, yeah, so the last two records, she's done a majority of stuff, but, uh, 
she's definitely an uh, inspiration behind a lot of the lyrics, you know, That's sometimes, right. you know, there's ups and downs in relationships. And so, you know, unfortunately, whenever you're down, that's usually when the inspiration comes the hardest. But well, and when you guys are down, that's when you say, "Hey, I'm going to tour Europe. You can come yeah. with me." And then you get back. Yeah, up again. exactly. Good point. Good point. Yeah, she so, got to go both times last last year. That was pretty that's amazing. A, that's a good deal. For, that's a good deal for the misses right there. Yeah, for sure. Your merchandise. Um, mm-hmm. We talked beforehand. I'm I'm about to be a proud owner of a shirt. Yeah. Go to your website. Um, you, we'll get all that here. You guys have some really cool uh, merchandise. Like I really, oh, cool. you know, because some of the bands in, in, and especially in the sky genre, it's like, I wouldn't be caught dead wearing yeah. that design on the shirt. Cause it's just not my style. <laughs> right. Totally. I really appreciate that. Um, very simplistic, but very, yeah. very attention to detail. So, which is a good time if they want to buy a Bandulu shirt or Bandulu shirt, where can they go? Uh, Bandulus.com. We have a, a limited run. It's called limited run is the, the website that hosts our, our stuff there. Uh, soul shot records. Limited run.com or just go to Bandulus.com <laughs> and there's a store there. It'll lead you to the pad right on the way. Yeah. And if they want to, you know, obviously you guys are on Spotify, Apple mm-hmm. music, Bandcamp. But if they want to yeah. reach out and contact you guys or stalk you, um, how can they do that? We're on face. We're old school. <laughs> we're just on <laughs> Facebook, really. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter at the Bandulus, all three. Uh, that's really the only social media that we do. I don't even open my Twitter anymore. I'm no. Pretty, like, I'm no. pretty, yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> like, archaic when it comes to that stuff. But, it's a wasteland at this yeah, point, you know. Well. Um, I just have them all tied together. So they all advertise at the same time. <laughs> and you guys are always, you know, I, look, I found out about you guys a few months ago, just kind of listened to your stuff, sat back, watched you um, because I'm, you know, I really only want to talk with artists that I really want to talk to who I, like I think have man. cool music, who got a cool story, who can inspire other people. And you guys are, you know, you're always posting on Instagram and stuff. And, uh, high quality stuff. You, you know, you're, you're a great person, very talented. And uh, so you, I would love to bring you back as we get the new album as we're getting ready for the new album yeah, at the end of the of year, course. maybe. And, yeah. um, you know, if you come to Nashville, are you going to be at the, um, you're going to be going to the punk rock bowling and music festival. Cause like every artist oh, asks me if I'm going and I'm like, I feel like I have to at this point. Right. I right. really would love to. I would love to. I'm not, <laughs> I, uh, I don't think I am, uh, at the, at this moment, but. All right. Bring I the would light. love to. Tell yeah, light. right. She would love Re- to come. Renew your vows in <laughs> Vegas at a drive through or something yeah. like a drive through chapel. <laughs> yeah, we're actually supposed to go for my daughter's 21st birthday. So oh, okay. that's, in, that's at the end of the summer. <laughs> uh, well, just a few months shy. Yeah. But yeah, every, yeah, I don't care who it is. Like, are you going to love to meet you at Punk Rock Bowling? I'm like, yeah. I, I don't want to go to Vegas in May. You know how hot it's going to be. <laughs> it's going to be warm. <laughs> but Jeremy, I thank you so much for your time. And we do this. We do this thing with some artists, but like I have a playlist of my followers. It's got like eight thousand, uh, eight thousand followers on Spotify. Nice. We're gonna drop in "Smile" cool. as our song of the week for you guys. Um, because uh, I like you. I said, that's like my favorite song that y'all do. Bandulus dot com, where you can get the merch. Yes. Sir. Next week, yes, I got I'm gonna be interviewing a deathcore group. Next oh, week. right on. So I'll be <laughs> right rocking on. your shirt in the interview. Yeah. Uh, give me some Hell press. Yeah. So, nice. Jeremy. I appreciate you and I appreciate your time. Good luck on the upcoming Thank shows you. and on the new album. Yeah, I appreciate it so much, man. Yeah, right. Have a good one. <laughs> we'll let it right there. All right. Thanks, man, for your time. And and um I'm gonna actually flip this pretty quick. Um okay. so we're gonna get it out probably in the morning. Nice. Um and then yeah. yeah, I mean you'll get a couple of thousand plays from the Spotify thing. You'll get Ooh. some, you know, you'll probably get some followers. Um, you know, and I mean, like, I got a lot of, like, up-and-coming bands as well. So that's why I was trying to do some of the, like, the uh, how did you do it? Because, you know, in, yeah. a, lot, a lot of young artists are dicks, you know? Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'm trying. It's like it's like how you don't want to ever meet your heroes in music. Cause right, yep. <laughs> doesn't usually turn out. That's, that's true. That's why when I met, because I've been a rancid kid since mm-hmm. the 90s. And when I first met those guys, I was like, Oh, they're really cool guys. Like yeah. there's, there's hope for humanity. Cause I've met, <laughs> I've met other artists and I'm like, never, I'm never meeting anybody again, you know? Right. Right. And, um, 
So I appreciate that. And then, yeah, I'll send you the link and then, yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. You, if you guys come to Nashville or if we're in the same city, dude, I'd love to, you know, check out a show and, you know, that, that would be rad, man. So, well, thanks for your time, dude. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you All so right. much. Have I'll a good t- day. You too, buddy.